port address translation means that this particular gateway will maintain a list. It's called port address translation table. Most of the time it's network address translation table. Uh, will manage uh, the entries. It's like an Excel sheet where the router will manage those entries. It will say, hey, the, this guy from inside went outside, but it went on 8.8.8.10 colon colon 65000. Right? So these are 65534 uh, ports, 65534 ports. So one of the ports will be actually assigned to this guy. The other guy might get 6.1, but it's not necessary. You might see, see random ports. It could be 47000. Uh, 002 or some numbers. So this way, n number of IP addresses, maybe 65,000 of IP addresses can now be converted into one IP address using uh, port address translation. Hopefully this is clear uh, how this uh, network address translation actually happens. Uh, this is how you basically save the IP address spaces. So what you need to understand is, in order to go to the internet, you need to wear the internet dress. The easiest way to understand, again, I want to concentrate on this particular piece of it. You are sitting at home, you are in your pajamas, you go want to go outside, you need to dress appropriately in order to go to the, go to the network. So what is the segment here? It's a router because it connects two different networks together. And then why you are in pajamas? Because you are in a private space. And why you want to dress nicely now? Because you are going to the public space. Hopefully this is clear. Let's talk about uh, two other services now. Uh, I think we have covered most of the topics here. Uh, let's try to cover uh, real quick uh, what is DACP and what is DNS services because these are actually uh, used in the in the networks. Um, in, in the previous example, I, I I told you there are there are ways of assigning these IP addresses, right? So. I honestly don't know what happens when the new community is being being built and uh, uh, somebody actually allocates them the IP address and the post office somehow come to know about these new addresses, right? But in our case, there are two ways of assigning the IP addresses in a in a network segment. So we have a big network segment here again, and well, we have a router. So this is a community, right? Community. So in order to go out from the community, there is only one gateway outside and one only one thing, one exit and entry route. This is the internet. And we have homes. These homes are nothing but the computers or devices which need IP addresses. This could be your iPhone, this could be your Mac Pro, or it could be your iPad, it could be any other Android device, it could be Android phone, could be a laptop, could be a printer, could be anything. So anything which requires an address is an IP address. Uh, will be allocated IP address in two different uh, ways. One is called the statically assignment, static assignment. You can definitely go inside the devices, go check the configuration or dynamically the address is assigned by whom most of the time it's a router or a gateway. So what happens in the router is there is a configuration for DHCP which stands for dynamically uh, dynamic host configuration protocol. Dynamic means dynamically the host will be assigned an IP address, right? So in this segment, what we what, what we tell in a DHCP service, this is actually running a service or a daemon, service or a daemon in the in the in the router. What happens is you will say, what is the network segment? This is a network network segment. What is the start IP address and what is the ending IP address? Means out of this whole network segment block, what is the IP address you actually want to assign to these these networks? So you will say, hey, I have almost like one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, maybe probably 10 IP addresses. So you will say the starting IP address is from 192.168.1. Maybe 10 to 1.15 because you only have five machines, right? And the remaining configuration will actually go by default. The default gateway configuration goes default gateway goes by default. DNS one is actually assigned. DNS two is actually also assigned. So the moment this service is actually enabled and your machine is enabled for DSCP, what will happen is the moment your machine actually boots up. It's hungry for the IP address. It'll say, oh my God, where is my IP? Where is my IP? Where is my IP? He say, oh, okay, don't worry about it. I have the, the I have the block of it. So out of this free block, uh, it will actually assign you one IP address. Ne not necessarily it actually goes in a series. You might be allocated dot fourteen, dot fifteen, dot one. So let's for the sake of simple simplicity, you are assigned dot ten. The other machine 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 wakes up in the morning. It will be assigned dot eleven, dot twelve, dot thirteen, dot fourteen. Dot 15. After dot 15, there will be no IP address which will be assigned. So if your machine sometimes uh, you can see this configuration, most of the time it is not a problem because 
it's by default you will have like 100, 100, 100 plus IP addresses to be assigned, 254 realistically, but uh, you can check this configuration some other time. So once the IP addresses are actually allocated to this segment automatically, they will be connected into this network either through the physical part or through the Wi-Fi Wi-Fi network. Uh, network address translation or port address translation will happen at the router port, port port of it and you will be able to go outside to the internet. So sometimes what happens is let's go through like some of the some, some of the troubleshooting and I will quickly actually cover DNS uh, why DNS is actually used and why it is important. So in order to troubleshoot the small networks what you can do is the very first thing you should do is you should check if first of all did you get a source address right always remember that there is a source address and there is a destination address always remember that there is an envelope and in the envelope do we have a from address and do we have a to address right to address is dynamic because we are going to google.com or yahoo.com or any other address so the to address here in our case actually changes but in our case see here if you have a from address first right if there is no from address the mail will actually not go out so in the from address, the very first configuration you should do is, and I'm strictly talking about IP uh, Windows networks. So just say this, just for the sake of example, you are connected. Don't take it literally, but there is a switch. Now you should understand uh, which is connected here. So the very first thing, step number one is IP config. You can say slash all means show me everything and you can also if you want to get re real fancy you can say pipe more pipe more will actually help you uh, most of the time if you say IP config the whole of the configuration it goes in, the, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a in a quick beat uh, this will actually help you go like uh, it will ask you to put a, put a space bar in order to go to the configuration look for IP configuration and see if you got a local IP address most of the time you will get in a home network 192.168 or some address here uh, see if you have a subnet mask if you have IP, you will definitely have a subnet mask. I have been see in my career that one of the things is missing. Uh, then it will tell you the gateway address. So first see if you are able to reach the gateway. IP config. The second thing is ping. So there are three steps. The second step is ping. Ping what? The default gateway. One. So the default gateway will be 192.168.1.1.1 in our case. And you will start getting a reply. If you are not getting a reply, it means what? Common sense tells me that if you're not even able to reach your gateway, the, which is the last exit point in your home or the first entry point in your home, you, there is some connection issue from these guys up to your gateway. So start troubleshooting that. That please don't worry about that if the internet is down, right? So you should actually receive a uh, confirmation that yes, you're able to reach the gateway. And then third time, ping the outside world, which is 4.2.2. I normally use, use everywhere this, uh, which is a Google DNS server. If the Google DNS server is down, uh, we have bigger problems to deal with than in this world today. So most of the time you will actually get a reply. If not, then there is something happen, happening here. So there could be a couple of things. Your route, uh, router might not be working properly. Your ISP cable modem or the DSL modem or T1, E1, E3 connections are down. So you're not getting an IP address here. Uh, sometimes, sometimes there might be a physical connectivity. So you'll know whom to call at this moment. You can always tell them, hey, my gateway is, um, I am able to reach my gateway, but I am not able to go outside. You can reboot reboot your cable modem and see if it actually helps you in any way. So there are a couple of troubleshooting steps we are not going uh, going in this particular video. So IP config, uh, ping your local gateway and try to ping the internet. And most of the time, you should get a reply. Uh, you should get the reply in order to actually reach the internet. Hopefully this is clear. Let's talk about what is the function of a DNS server. Why DNS? So DNS is actually stands for domain name services, domain name services. By this time we are clear that in a, in a, in a small network, in a big network, in an enterprise network, there is a source address and there is a destination address. Both of them are actually required. So what you will do is uh, ping the source address, right? 4.2.2.2, sorry, uh, destination address. Doesn't mean that uh, you did not put your source address there. Your source address will be pulled up by this command uh, all, all, already. So it will, it will definitely tell that the source is actually 192.168.1.10 and the destination is 4.2.2.2. Right? So now this is just the IP address of the destination. Have you ever tried this command ping space www.google.com? Do you think it will work? The answer is yes, only on one condition. If the DNS services are 
on or the PC or your machine is able to resolve this www.google.com into an IP address. At the end of the day, everything needs to get resolved into an IP address space, right? So all of these IP addresses, so uh, people again, uh, some association, some group, don't worry about what, what that group was. I go to my internet browser, I open my internet browser, I type here HTTP colon colon, let's say 206.206.206.206. Do you think it will open something here on the web browser? May or may not be, and I will tell you the reason behind it. If this 2.2.2, this address is actually allocated or, or mapped, M A P P E D, mapped to something called www.example.com, this will actually open a web browser for example.com. So, what's happening is DNS basically what it does is DNS is a service which converts the IP address space. Which actually converts the IP address, which, which, which actually takes care of the mapping between an IP address space and a FQDN, fully qualified domain name. So, in this example, www.example.com might be 206.200.200.200. So, instead of you remembering what was example.com, the IP addresses of each of the, of the web start. So, what we were saying here is uh, the DNS service um, is a service which keeps the mapping. Uh, between a fully qualified domain name to an IP address. So, uh, so if you look at the DNS uh, server somewhere, so www.google.com corresponds to an IP, which could be, I'm just giving an example, so don't, don't try to experiment with this. Uh, this could be the IP address. Yahoo.com could be 100.100.100.100, right? CNN could be 8.8.8.8. I'm just giving some examples, right? So who manages these entries? DNS, your DNS server, which is in your in your configuration, manages the DNS entry. So that's why if your ISP actually assigns you that DNS address, it means that your ISP, in order to resolve Google.com, the moment you type Google.com, it actually goes to your I goes to your ISP DNS server and asks for hey what is the google ip address your I, the dns server at your isp allocates an ip address which the information uh, the dns server has and this uh, google.com will get get transferred into an ip address segment so don't ask me this question uh, i already have an answer for it uh, it does google.com only have one ip address right the answer is strictly no uh, it actually goes to a different topic where we call it LLBs and GLBs, uh, global load balancers. We talk about local load balancers. Uh, so Google.com in your country, in your space, in your area would be different than Google.com uh, server in my area, right? So it's totally different. Uh, uh, these websites who are being accessed very frequently, uh, they have been distributed, uh, 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 distributed throughout the world. Uh, by the by the way of the architecture and design there are a lot of equipment which is actually involved into it uh, like facebook.com facebook.com doesn't have one ip address it has uh, probably hundreds and thousands of ip addresses uh, those are actually distributed uh, by way of accessibility if particular um, uh, so so, let, so let's not get, get into too much of it i hope you understand what is the service uh, what is the dns service it is a domain name service converts our domain name into an ip address that's all you need to know so if you are not able to you are able to reach 4.2.2.2 but you are not able to browse google.com or you are not able to browse any internet it means it's a problem with your dns service uh, the DNS, dns server might not be working or the ip address you have for the dns might not be correct so just as a recap for this uh, uh, video um, i think we have covered uh, small networks for the big world uh, we covered uh, about networks uh, again just a recap it's a, first we need to actually take care of the physical part of the network then we have to take care of the logical part of the network. The logical part of the network for this uh, videos were only about IP addressing uh, segments. There's more to it, but we only talked about how to assign IP addresses to the PCs uh, statically and dynamically. And then we talked about uh, the hardware equipment a little bit, like what are the switches, what are the function of the switches, what are the functions of the routers. Uh, we talked about Ethernet networks, wired Ethernet networks and Wi-Fi uh, networks. Uh, we covered uh, your uh, OSI layer architecture um, and then we talked about a little bit about DHCP servers and DNS server addresses as well. 
So this concludes the video. Uh, if you have any question, uh, please do feel free to leave a comment. If you want me to cover anything, any other topic, uh, please do let me know and I will try my best to actually post a video for that. Um, and uh, happy watching and uh, subscribe to the link. And thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much. Bye.